Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Jules. Today I'm going to be reviewing some new concealers by Too Faced. I actually hadn't heard anything about these concealers. Here they are right here. They are the Born This Way Ethereal Light Illuminating Smoothing Concealers. I had a subscriber actually message me and ask me if I was going to be reviewing these and I went and looked it up and saw that they were new. So I went ahead and ordered them from Sephora and I'm going to be reviewing these two. I picked up two different shades. We're gonna see which one's the best match for me and I'll take you through the application of it and how I build on top of it. And then we'll do some check-ins and watch this to see how it does throughout the day. So if you're interested in hearing more about this concealer, then just go ahead and keep on watching. Before I get into the application, I wanna tell you a little bit about these. So these are called the Too Faced Born This Way Ethereal Light Smoothing Concealers. They retail for $26, and there appears to be 18 shades in the range. Looking at this, it looks like there is a pretty even amount of tones across the spectrum which is always good. Reading directly from Sephora's website, this is described as a buttery, serum light, buildable concealer that effortlessly glides on skin to camouflage and cover imperfections for up to 24 hours. The coverage is said to be medium, it is a natural finish, and of course it is a liquid product. The highlighted ingredients in this concealer are coconut water, which aids in delicately replenishing replenishing the skin's moisture levels, alpine rose that helps empower skin's health and resilience, and we also have hyaluronic acid, which gives a smoother, more youthful appearance. This product is cruelty-free. This is also said to be a waterproof formula that is also sweat and humidity resistant, as well as non-creasing and provides all-day moisture. So let me show you the packaging on this one. Way back in the day, I think I did try the other Born This Way concealer. I think it was a sculpting concealer. I don't know if I still have that one. If I did, I would probably need to trash it because it's probably some years old. I never tried the Born This Way foundation. I don't think, did I? I don't think I tried that one. I do though have the Ethereal Light Setting Powder. So anyway, the packaging looks very similar to those other two products. It has that uh, kind of a blush pink shade, which is really beautiful. I did actually order two different shades because I was not sure which shade to get. I don't remember the shade that I had in the other concealer, but as you know, these shades are so hard to read online. So I picked up Honey Graham and Caramel Drizzle. We will just kind of swatch both of them and see which one is gonna be best for me. I do already have foundation on. I do have my brows done. So I am ready at this point for concealer. So I'm gonna go ahead and unbox both of these products so you can see what they both look like. The packaging is also very beautiful. Let me quickly pull up Honey Graham and Caramel Drizzle and see how it is described. Honey Graham, which is the lighter shade right here, is described as a tan with neutral undertones. And then Caramel Drizzle is the next shade up that is a deep with golden undertones. That is this one. So let's swatch both of these. Okay, swatching Caramel Drizzle. It already looks like it's probably gonna be too dark. And then swatching, what is this one? Honey Graham. On top of that one, you see Honey Graham looks like more of a pretty good match for that part of my arm, which is lighter than my face. I do like to brighten a little bit with my concealer, so I will probably go in with Honey Graham. It looks like as these are sitting, they are getting darker as well. So more so the reason why I would go with Honey Graham. I do want to describe my under eye area to, me, to you as well as my skin just in general. I do have combo skin, which means 
I am oilier here in the T-zone of my face and then pretty much normal everywhere else. Now under my eyes, I do feel like I am a little bit drier and so I have to be careful as far as wearing matte concealers. They do tend to look crepey under my eyes and will easily settle into those fine lines ev even after setting the concealer. So I typically try to stay away from those types of concealers, but this one says it's more of a natural finish. It doesn't say anything about it being matte. And it sounds like it's got a lot of moisturizing type of ingredients in it. So I am hopeful on this concealer. Okay, so to blend my concealer in, for a couple of years now, I have been using a brush. I just like the application better. I no longer use a sponge. Um, the main reason why is when you've got a damp sponge, you're mixing water, even though it, it's dampened and not soaking wet, you are mixing water in with the product and I think that changes the product and you're not getting the true application of a concealer. So because of that, that is why I started using a brush for my application and I just feel like it looks smoother under my eyes using a brush as well. I typically use uh, a different MAC brush, but that one's dirty. My other concealer brush, my daughter has taken from me because she started wearing concealer. So I need to buy another brush. But I remembered I had this one from MAC that I used years ago. This is the MAC 227. I originally bought this one for concealer. This was back when people weren't really using brushes for concealer, but I love how wide this one is and the overall shape of it. I feel like it does really well with concealers. So, oh, let me show you the doe foot on this one. This looks like a thinner doe foot than most recently, the ones that I have tried. And it looks like it kind of has a diamond shape at the top probably to aid in application in those inner eye areas. So typically I will take my concealer in this area. This already feels and looks very much like a serum. So I went ahead and was generous in that area. And then I will usually just take a dab right here in the outer corner of my eye and then let's go ahead and work this in so we can get an idea of what we're working with. I did just want to also add that the whole, um, I want to make sure I don't get this on my white shirt, the whole uh, theory of whether to use a sponge or a brush, it's really personal preference when it comes down to it. I personally just like the application of a brush better. So I don't want to offend anyone that uses a sponge. I used a sponge for years and if a sponge works best for you, then keep using a sponge. But for me personally, I just like the application of the brush better. Makeup is universal and it's meant to be used uh, according to how it works best on each individual person. So there are no rules with makeup. I just wanted to emphasize that. Okay, it's very minimal coverage. I don't see much of a difference between this eye and this eye, just looking into my mirror here. So I'm gonna build this up just a tad bit. I also am wondering if I need to actually go lighter in the shade. It feels nice and I like the fact that it is so thin and serum-like, but the good thing about this one is it is, or it claims to be, a buildable formula. I usually like to take it up this way, just the leftover. Um, for the eyes today, I'm actually going to use my Danessa Myricks Lightwork Volume 3 palette, but I'm doing a very simple look. 
I am going to my daughter's, both of my daughters are actually playing this afternoon. They're playing volleyball. And so I'm going to be going up to the schools. I don't want to do anything really dramatic. Okay, so that's actually not bad. It looks very similar to my skin tone, but just a touch brighter, which is what I like. And it doesn't look heavy, but it looks like it gave me a little bit of coverage after building it for the second time. Okay, so I'm gonna build that one more time just to keep it similar to the other side and just to add a little bit more coverage. I was a little bit more generous in the first application this time, so I'm gonna keep it just like that. And my theory on concealer is it's going to crease on everyone. I have yet to find a concealer that is not going to, uh, to crease. The key is, is it going to crease after you set it? Now, unless you don't have any lines under your eyes, I can see it not creasing without setting it. But I have fine lines under my eyes, and so everything is going to crease unless you set it. So I always look for those concealers that um, are not or are going to crease minimally after setting. Just giving myself a once over to see, do I need more on this side? Okay, I like the finish of that. Do I want to take some down the center? Let's see. Kind of smells like Play-Doh. It blends in really easily because it is so thin. Okay, and that's about what I do. And so I'm gonna go ahead and set with my usual Givenchy setting powder. I'm just taking a makeup puff and I'm just going to pick up some powder. And that looks really chunky. So what I do, this is a tip from Rosen Ben. I think I started doing this a year and a half, two years ago, if I had to guess. I started watching Rosen Ben over on Instagram. She is so talented and is so knowledgeable about makeup. I've picked up quite a few tips from her just from watching her. So I started doing this probably two years ago. So this is her trick. I don't want to take credit for it. So what I do is I just take that onto the back of my hand and smooth it out to where it's even on the puff. Now, before I go back in to set my concealer, I'm gonna come up really close here so you can see my under eyes. You should see where it has already settled into my fine lines. So before I set, I want to make sure to smooth all of that back in because you don't want to set where it's already settled. And then immediately take your puff and I'll usually take this down the side of my nose and I'll take it all the way up through here where I had the concealer. And you can do this all day long. This just makes it look smoother the more you do it. So there's the set side, there's the unset side. Picking up more powder again, I'm gonna smooth that on my hand. I like to have this ready to go, so right after I smooth everything out, I can immediately go back in. And then I'll just kind of take what's left on my puff and take it around my nose. 
up through the brows. And then just picking up a little bit more high chin. And then I'm going to go ahead and set all through here because I am using a matte bronzer today. Picking up the tiniest bit, taking it through here. See how smooth that looks? So that is how everything looks after setting it. And we will just kind of watch this as the day goes by. Do some check-ins and different lighting and let you take a look at it. Okay, here is the completed look. I love how everything has built on top of that concealer so far. So far it looks good. I don't see any creasing or separation or crepiness or any of the things that usually bother me with concealers. So everything is looking good at this point. So it is 1.40 right now. Gosh, I wish I would have looked at the time when I was finishing the application. But we'll go ahead and start the wear test now at 1.40. Um, I know that I applied this sooner, but I don't know exactly what time that was, so we'll just start it at 1.40. So I will see you in a little bit. Hello, I am back for a little check-in. It is 6.09 at this time, and I just wanted to do a close-up and show you how everything was looking under the eyes. I did change my top because I have already gone to the girls' volleyball game, but let's take a look at the concealer close-up. It appears to look good. There's very minimal creasing at this point. Um, I feel like it brightened up under the eyes a smidge and everything looks good so far. Feels good. Don't have any complaints. It is the end of the night. It is 9.53. So this is gonna be my last check-in for the night. I am about to wash everything off and go straight to bed. So, final thoughts on this concealer, very minimal creasing. I think I prefer a little bit more coverage. I feel like it's a, a, a touch too thin, but I'm gonna keep wearing it for the next uh, two, three days, and I'll give you my final, final thoughts at the very end of the month. But overall, I have no complaints, really. Um, I felt like there was just a little bit more darkness in that area than I typically do when I wear a concealer. But like I said, I'm gonna wear it again for the next two or three days so I can give you um, better thoughts. But after wearing it for a full day, those are gonna be my first impression thoughts. It feels good. I feel like it is moisturizing, it's not drying, and it didn't excessively crease. So those are all big positives for a concealer. So that's gonna do it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed as I took you through and tried out this new concealer for you. If you have any specific questions regarding the concealer, don't hesitate to leave me a comment down below and I'll get back to you as soon as I'm able to. If you enjoy videos like these, don't forget to hit that subscribe button on your way out. And as always, I love you guys, be blessed, and I will see you in the very next one. Bye.